I'm going to tell you a story about a piece of research that was done many, many, many years ago. 1961, I think, is when it was actually published. So this study outlived anybody, I think, who was in this room right now, way, way back, even before I was born. That's how old it is. So this study is done by a guy named William McGuire. He was a professor at Yale University. At Yale University, he had put together a laboratory in psychology. And he was studying lots of things. For example, one question that really intrigued William McGuire was, how is it that so many people are tricked by bad ideas? Have you noticed this in your life, that bad ideas tend to spread faster than good ideas? Have you ever noticed that? Like, if there's a false rumor, that's the fastest thing to go around the whole school. If there's a true statement about something, it doesn't go beyond four or five people. But false things, they spread really rapidly. The emails that get sent out to tens of millions of people are the fake things, you know, the urban legends, not the true things. So why is that? He found long before there was such a thing as an internet, the same thing was true, that bad ideas spread faster than good ideas. He found, as he studied this, a suitable analogy. He said, I think bad ideas spread faster than good ideas because bad ideas are like viruses. So think about virus theory for a moment. You've all taken biology class, right? So you've all at least looked at this very briefly. A little bit of virus theory. Can you take a pill and kill the viruses in your body? No, you can't. But taking a pill won't kill the viruses in, in your body. It can cut down on the symptoms that the virus will create in your body, all that kind of thing. But you can't really take a pill. It's not like an infection. You can, take, you can take a pill and actually kill an infection, kill the bacteria, but you can't, really, you can't really kill a virus. So what's the reigning theory in how we stop viruses from hurting us? What's it called? Vaccination based on what? What's the idea behind a vaccination? You all know this. Just don't be so shy. Just speak up. Do what? Okay, the body, if you, give the, if you give a little bit of the virus in a relatively harmless form, your body will learn how to fight the virus so that when you're attacked by the regular virus, you have been inoculated to it. It's called vaccination or immunization. That's the reigning theory. And this is how it works with smallpox, measles, mumps, rubella. Most of you have had all of those shots your whole life. You've had those kinds of shots. You had to go to the doctor and get those things. So that's the reigning theory in the whole, the whole area of dealing with viruses. Now, this is what was really interesting to William McGuire. If it works in medicine, would it work with bad ideas? So we decided to test it. This is where it gets really interesting to me. How would you test this? Well, you have to give people a bad idea and see if they believe it. But that in itself is a bad idea. <laughs> what if they do believe you? You've ruined them. <laughs> you can't ruin them just because they're sophomore students trying to get extra credit in psychology. You have to be human about this. So he actually said, all right, we will test ideas that are false but relatively limited in their impact, such as Brushing your teeth is bad. They would test that idea, see if people would believe it. Because they realize, if they believe it, they'll not brush their teeth for three or four days. And their girlfriend will tell them, I'm breaking up with you if you don't brush your teeth. And they will start brushing their teeth again, and everything will be restored to normal. So that's kind of his idea. So he brought in the students who were going to be in the research project. The first group, he didn't give them any preparation at all. He said, go in that other room. You're going to hear a persuasive message. Second group, he reviewed with them what they already knew to be true. Do you know brushing your teeth is good? Yeah. How do you know? Because when we were in second grade, the big tooth puppet came to our class. And ever since, we've believed. <laughs> All right, good. Go in the other room. So third group, he warned them there would be a coming attack. Somebody's going to try to persuade you that brushing your teeth is bad, just so you know. Fourth group, so they went in the room. So there are only these three groups left. The fourth group, he inoculated them. He said, 
You'll hear a persuasive message that brushing your teeth is bad, and the argument will be as follows. When you brush your teeth, it wipes away the saliva, which is the tooth's natural protective agent. Then he sent them in the room. He didn't tell them anything more, just sent them in the room. But now, they weren't going to be shocked when they heard this message. They had heard it before. Fifth group, he showed them how to refute that message. If somebody tells you that brushing your teeth is bad because it wipes away the saliva, which is the tooth's natural protective agent, I just want you to remember that, strictly speaking, if we only ate raw fruits and vegetables, that would be true. But in our days of processed foods, you have to brush your teeth to wipe away the food particles that otherwise could damage the enamel of your teeth. So they got the argument, then they went in the other room. They had one group left. He said to them, this is true, you're going to hear an argument that brushing your teeth is bad. The argument is as I've told you it will be, but there's one more piece of information that's critical for you and you only to know. That's not the only argument you're going to hear. There will be others. And you need to learn to respond intelligently to those other arguments, just like we've shown you how to respond intelligently to this one. At the end of the study, they asked the students, did you believe the persuasive message, yes or no? Which group do you think was best able to resist the message that brushing your teeth was bad? It would make sense for the last group. Which group do you think was least able to resist the persuasive message that brushing your teeth was bad? It would make sense it would be the first group, right? But it actually is the second group. And they found in the study the group that didn't prepare at all was not as likely to believe the message as the group that reviewed what they already needed to be true. This part, you are right. This last group right here, there was only one, one person. I'm laughing because there's always one, right? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Do I still get my extra credit? Yep, you do. Okay, so. Some people just don't take it, you know, like they go, they don't take any of it seriously, and it messes with the psychology students' experiments and all that, and they just think that's pretty funny. And I only know that because <laughs> I was one of them. So, <laughs> so, but this is really a stunning result right here if you think about it. If, if this is compelling to you at all, if you're following this conversation, you realize if the group that reviewed what they already knew to be true was significantly more likely to be persuaded than the group that didn't have any preparation at all, there's something about that review or something about what they already knew that ended up being used against them. Do you see that? Somehow it was used against them. Talk to me about this. What do you think was going on in this situation? Right, if, yeah, the, the, there must, if this is going to even be brought up, then it must be the case that I was wrong all of those years. Maybe the tooth puppet was wrong. Maybe the scientific evidence is actually more persuasive. Newer is better, after all, so maybe this is better. You can see how people would talk themselves into rejecting that belief. But the point, I think, for the Christian community is a very serious one. I went to a Sunday school conference one time and I said, let me share with you something of this research. I said, if this is true and all you're doing in your Sunday school curriculum is telling the same Bible stories over again year after year, you're not setting students up to successfully defend their faith, you're setting them up to successfully reject it. I thought they would welcome this news. I have never been invited back to teach at the Sunday school convention. It was just too threatening of an idea. But what if it's so? I mean, what if it's true? Even if it is threatening, what if it's true? What if it's true that in order to successfully resist bad ideas, you have to be able to not only understand the bad ideas, you have to be able to respond to them, and you have to have thinking skills that enable you to be flexible in all kinds of different situations you might face.